And welcome back to the one and only Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE, 1350 AM. Well, it's a big time for UC Riverside men's basketball. They're coming off a strong finish to the season, um, a lot of strong showing even at the Big West Tournament as we almost had that number one seed, UC Davis. I still think we should have won that game, but the Highlanders were finishing up strong. And joining us right now on the phone, the Director of Athletics, Tamika Smith-Jones. And, and Tamika, um, before we get into the coaching hire and whatnot, you know, how did how did you like the way the Highlanders were able to finish this season going into that Big West Conference tournament? I I, I couldn't be more proud of those young men and and the coaching staff. I've said it to them directly and um, to the student athletes and the coaching staff that um, they did exactly what I expect them to do. Um, you know, from day one of the transition, being resilient and and having a lot of focus. That was. Um, led by Coach um, Bell and, and his team of, of guys that were leading the, those young men. And then we had those seniors step up. I mean, I, I hadn't seen some of the leadership that, that they displayed going down the stretch. And so I could tell that they were driven to finish strong and for a lot of reasons and for, if nothing else, to make sure that, that those seniors got a chance to go out in, in, in high fashion. So making it to the tournament, you know, was one step of it. But actually getting into the tournament, I, I stayed behind from our um, uh, my duties on the women's basketball committee to make sure that I was present to um, just be there and support for them on, on the day that they actually played the first um, game with Davis. And they played it to the end. If we had two more minutes, we would have pulled it off. I know. You know what? Time ran out. Jeff Gorham and myself, we, we both feel those losses. We, we had drive home back to Riverside. It was painful because we, we felt like, oh, man, that was one we should have had. But it was, a, it was a great way to finish the season. It was a strong run put together by Coach Bell and the Highlanders. Now David Patrick steps in. He was the associate head coach at Texas Christian University most recently. He's been named the head coach. He'll be formally introduced by the school very, very soon. Um, Tamika, what was it about David Patrick when you when you met with him, when you looked at his resume whatnot? What was it about him that kind of separated himself from the other candidates, other coaches that you were looking at? Well, one thing that, that really separated him was, um, you know, his pedigree, his resume of, of having – um, had some great experience, experiences from, you know, mid-major programs that had to build and, and um, develop um, talent and, and uh, a foundation for a program to um, be one of the best in their league, like at a St. Mary's, um, and also having had the opportunity to work with, um, you know, some of the, the greats and, and places like LSU where you can recruit um, just about anybody if you can get, get in front of them, um, you know, you know, that, that variance of experience is very important to me. One of the things that I've, I've marveled at being at Riverside is, um, you know, just being able to recruit the best talent to build this program into the uh, relevant Division One program that um, Chancellor Kim has a vision for that um, I was hired to, um, you know, to, to make sure that we did all the things that matter. Um, for our student athletes and their experience and um, hiring and, and, and making sure that that vision was laid and set. Um, and so it's been, been interesting to see um, Coach Patrick's, you know, journey as he's had time to uh, be a part of programs and, and um, you know, have his hand, get his hands dirty and, and building them. And you know, as well as I know, it's, uh, it's all about the players. It's all about the student athletes and um, any anyone that, you know, um, thinks anything different, I, you know, I would, I would have to, you know, really, um, you know, listen in tune with because um, as a former player and a former coach um, and now I've been in the athletic director seat, uh, I do believe that if you get the talent that you can compete with anybody. And so, you know, that, that, you know, sometimes can disregard the limitations on facilities, on funding. Um, and Coach Patrick has proven to do that. You know, all the stars that he's been able to, to recruit, um, what separated him and, and probably our interview was the fact that he understood the value in recruiting young men that would be just as serious in the classroom as they would be on the court. So, you know, being at an LSU, uh, TCU, you can pretty much recruit any um, talent that you want. Being at a Riverside, you, you're going to have to really be able to find some, some hidden gems sometimes, and, and I think he can do that. Yeah, being a UC school as well, you got to have the grades uh, to get in. So um, UC Riverside is, is a good gig, but you're right. You, the kids also got to get the job done in the classroom to stay eligible. And, and being a head coach, 
it's more than just the coaching, the basketball. Like you said, it's the fundraising. It's the recruiting. It's all these other things that are part of the duties of being a head coach at the Division One level. Like you said, that was kind of appealing about Coach Patrick, right, because he was able to do uh, a variety of these different things in the role of a head coach. Absolutely. He's been, he's been a part of some great staffs. I mean, um, you know, Jamie uh, at, at TCU, you know, he's been able to really – uh, run as much of the show as he as he wanted to, and so being able to have somebody that has that um, background and experience of, of you know the value of, of bridging gaps, whether that's financially, whether that's with um, you know relationships in the community, whether that's um, being able to take these young men to the next levels of their profession, whether that be you know playing internationally or um, you know we may you know get a shot you know. Um, and, 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 and the state, who knows? Uh, I think, you know, we all know that when, when men decide that they're going to play Division One basketball, they typically have a, a good plan in place that they will continue to play as long as their bodies will allow. So I heard that from, you know, Alex, and um, I heard that from even some of those that have gone on and made their own way, like a, a Jalen. And I think having a, a person like Coach Patrick that really can help these young men um, is really key. It's, um, you know, I'll never get away from, um, you know, my real passion for what I do, and that is to make sure these student-athletes get just as much of an opportunity as athletics has done for me, has done for Coach Patrick, and me and him shared a lot of those com- conversations and dialogue um, quite differently than some of the other coaches that were buying for the job. So uh, that was very important, that those two primary objectives of, of student first and being able to really um, – you know, um, elevate our relevance across uh, men's basketball division one landscape is, is it was critical. And Coach Patrick was the one that I thought most closely identified with that. We're talking with Tamika Smith-Jones, the UCR Director of Athletics. And, and Tamika, I, I want to give you a, a chance to um, to voice your thoughts about not only Dennis Cutts and, and, and the new coaching hire, because I know a lot of people out there are sometimes jumping to assumptions and whatnot. I, I, you mentioned something, and I think it, it goes back to the whole coaching deal, is that you, know, you need to put the student-athletes first and make sure that their experience at UCR is going to be a good one and a fruitful one. So c- can you explain you know, why make a coaching decision in the middle of the season and how important it was it that when you hired coach Patrick that you that you knew you were getting the right guy in place um, to replace uh, not only coach cuts but also the interim coach Justin Bell yeah um, well you know these these decisions are never easy Um, you know as as athletic directors they pay us to make decisions and sometimes you, you just you, you can't please everybody, of course, and you, but you have to be thoughtful and you have to, you know, stay with your core values. You just have to stay with the mission of the university. You have to keep the student athletes at heart. And um, I'll be quite honest with you. Uh, I don't know if, if people saw the writing on the wall or what, but I was, I was basically threatened by, you know, some of the boosters about, you know, making any kind of transitions or decisions. And, and um, you know, it's, that's a tough place to be. Um, in my seat, but, you know, with the support of, of the chancellor, with the support of the, um, you know, close consultants that I, that I work with that former UCR men's basketball players who are now doing great things right here in our, in our region, um, you know, uh, alums and, and other community officials that really care about the student athletes and not necessarily, you know, have their own agenda. They, they made it very clear to me that they were very um, supportive of, of whatever decision that was made and understood the business side of this as well as um, the core of what we need to be doing as we made any decision in athletics. And that was to make sure that the student athletes were first, that their experience was second to none, second to none. Um, and we can do that here at Riverside. And the mid-year transition really just happened as a result of, um, you know, some of the, the, the student athletes, they just, they weren't happy. And um, they, they felt comfortable enough talking to me as the athletic director uh, about some of their concerns. And it was some of the concerns that were addressed were things that we could resolve. And so the other part of it is, you know, the, the experience that they thought they should have been, been having, um, it was subpar. It, you know, they, they enjoyed, you know, they were very grateful and appreciative of uh, what we provided for them, education, the opportunity to compete, 
Um, but, you know, it, that that pretty much was it from the standpoint of where, really did they believe that we could help them transition to the next place? Um, did they believe that we could help them resolve issues that came up personal um, in their lives every day? Um, and when they start having to have a conversation with the athletic director versus being able to have that conversation with their, you know, assistant coaches, head coaches, um, sometimes the conversations were had in the training room. Sometimes they were had in the academic services area. Um, wherever they felt most comfortable, they were having those conversations. And, you know, it was it was disheartening to have to make a mid-year change. But I knew um, with everything that I had evidence of that we weren't going to, you know, uh, make a slam dunk of the year. We weren't going to be the Big West champion, so to speak. And so with that thought in mind, it was it was totally – get out in front of the rest of this landscape and all the hires that you see are being made right now. I'm here in, 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 um, in, in um, Columbus now with the Women's Basketball Committee and had a coach, an AD that's on the committee, made a, made a coaching change in five days. Mm. It took me two months. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, 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 they're in, and they're at a historically black college and university. Made a made a coaching change in five days. That's quick. Um, <laughs> that quick. That quick. And so, you know, I I only I, I look back and you know can only imagine if I would have waited until the end of the year and and still had to make this adjustment. What kind of position I would have our student athletes in our program in, and um and, and 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 again I can't I can't say enough how much I appreciate what Coach Cut did to bridge the gap. I mean, he came with the previous athletic director um, who was the coach at the time, um, and he had 10 years here to help mold and, 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 and make this program a better program. And he said one thing to me that I really, really respect, and that is that, that he did the best he could with it, and, um, and we, need some, we need some help. And, and I told him unequivocally, I, I know that coach, and and I know we need some help, and so we've got to get some people on the team that could really help us. And so that's not just in the head coach position; that's in many positions. I'm I'm in the uh, uh, final stages of of hiring a, a senior associate for external affairs who can kind of bridge the gap, take a lot of the load that I'm having to carry on the um, ticket operations, the um, media relations, strategic communications, the the um, the external affairs that will bring dollars and cents. Um, you know, my focus as an athletic director really should be hiring the best talent to put in front of our student athletes and bringing in resources that will help um, advance the vision forward. And I'm doing all that I can to do that. I'm working with Learfield now on a uh, deal that is going to, you know, it's, it's going to be a historic deal for our program. And so um, men's basketball is one of those things that I, I just wanted to – to get a person in place that can handle it from A to Z that has already had the experience of doing it at a high level, at a mid-major, and Coach Patrick just checked all those boxes for me. We're talking with Tamika Smith-Jones, UCR Director of Athletics. Uh, Tamika, finally, I just wanted to ask you um, the fact that the, the, the way the season kind of played out, you know, Jeff and I, we saw every single UC Riverside game, either both of us or one, at least one of us. And when you, when, you take right. a look, when you take a look at just the Big West Conference games, you know, the Highlanders were in every single game. The, the one that got, kind of yep. got away was the road game at UC Irv Irvine. But the other games, they could have won every all of those games, and I know you know people say, well, that you know they couldn't have won all of them. No, they were in every single game except for that road game at UC Irvine. So with Coach Patrick stepping in, what are your expectations? Because I look at a Cal State Fullerton who UC Riverside beat and almost beat twice. Fullerton went to the Big Dance in the NCAA tournament. What what are your expectations for this program? And are you hoping to see UCR in the NCAA tournament soon? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. I absolutely hope. That, that we can help give Coach Patrick the, the resources that he needs. And that's not just dollars and cents. That's, you know, being able to, um, you know, um, recruit and retain our student athletes that, that we have now, which are our priority, to be able to um, place them academically in, in, in um, majors that they desire to be in and that um, would fit their balance uh, for athletics and academics that we'd be able to, um, you know, do all the things that a Division One program um, should be able to do. 
Um, but I think for Coach Patrick, you know, those close games are going to be games won because he's got the experience of playing in the toughest, you know, game. Big 12 is not a, not a, you know, big win. Um, and he's, he's battled, he's battle tested. Um, he, he, you know, works, we talked a lot about how closely he works with, um, you know, analytics and the things that they do at the major universities. I think that would close the gap on where our strengths and weaknesses are, what we need to be spending our time on in practice. Um, it's going to be pretty exciting to see, uh, what he can get out of what we already have in our program, which I think is some of the best talent in the big West. Um, and like you said, I mean, we beat, we beat most of the teams in, in the Big West and with Fullerton winning it, I mean, that was just, you know, one more sign that we can be in the championship game. Um, so, so I, I, you know, you still have to, you know, toss the ball up and play the game. Um, but I believe that, that what Coach Patrick brings is um, he'll be able to get us those hidden gems that we, could, we couldn't get with, um, you know, what we had been doing in the past far as recruiting is concerned. And I thought, and I also think that he will definitely be able to use his experience in, in um, the coaching the sport at a high level, being able to listen to the best coaches in the industry, being able to utilize his skills and training with analytics, uh, being able to position our student athletes in the best places and, and um, on the court um, in training and, and getting their bodies fit for to finish strong every game. Um, and working with our strength coaches, working with our trainers, you know, uh, pulling in nutrition um, support for our student athletes, diet. Uh, he's done all that. So it's not a guessing game. It's not, you know, whether it can be done, it's how we will do it. And I'm just so excited to have him on board and to be able to support that. And, and as an athletic director, supporting a, a vision of his for his, his basketball program, not, um, you know, kind of walking it out in the blind or not sure what we want to do. I think he has a plan. He shared that plan with me. Um, and it's my job to just help support him and get it done. And Coach Patrick was gracious enough to join us here on the show, and I know we'll be formally introduced at a, at a press conference coming up very soon at UCR. Tamika, we always appreciate the time. Uh, enjoy the Women's Final Four. I know it's a business trip, but try to soak in a little bit of fun out there too, and uh, we'll see you soon back on campus. Yes, and, and that press conference is, is April the 11th. Um, we hope to see everyone there. It'll be from 3 to 5 in the Johnson Family Practice Center, so – um, please make sure if you don't have the information on RSVP, um, send me an email and we'll make sure you get on the list. Thank you again, Pep. Thank you for all your support of what you do for UCR Athletics. Go Highlanders. All right, that's Tamika Smith-Jones, UC Riverside Director of Athletics, and we'll be right back. It's the one and only Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE, 1350 AM.